All right, so I thought I'd take a little bit of time today just to create this short video about how to use the kinematics equations. Now in class I called them the magic kinematics equations, but you'll see next class that there's actually ways to derive them. They're not really magic, they're just very, very, very helpful and very useful. So this is just a quick reminder, these are the various kinematic equations. There's four of them that we use. Now three of them will be on the AP exam. So let me show you the ones that will be on the AP exam. This one, this one, and this one will be on the AP exam. This one should be fairly straightforward because you know that velocity times time will give you the change in, in position. And because of that, um, this is just the average velocity times the time, which will give you the change in, in position or the displacement. So um, these three will be on the AP exam. I will ask that you memorize them anyway, just because, again, it is nice to have them memorized and, again, a time saver. Now I want to go through and work a couple of questions that involve these. All right, so let's look at the first one. We're going to look at a car traveling at 22 meters per second, so it's in the positive direction. It's a velocity, right? It's a vector to a full stop in two seconds. Assume the acceleration is constant. So the first question is, what is the car's acceleration? Well, the first thing I should do is identify the information that I have. I'm given the initial velocity here. That's how far fast it's going to start with. I'm given that it stops in two seconds, so that's my time. And the other thing that it gives me is that it goes to a full stop, which means the final velocity is zero. So let's write down what we have. Initial velocity equals 22 meters per second. We know that the final velocity, or just v, is equal to zero meters a second because it goes to a stop. And then we know that the time is equal to 2.0 seconds. Now we're looking for the car's acceleration. Okay, now if I look at my four kinematics equations, then I find one equation that has these four variables. Now some of the other equations have other things, right, like the displacement or initial displacement, things like that, but I don't want those because I don't know what the displacement is during this time period. And so I'm not going to include anything that has a displacement in it. I'm just going to look for the equation that has these four variables, which it turns out that it is V equals initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. And so now I should be able to put these numbers in. So 0 equals the initial velocity, which is 22 meters per second. Sorry, this should also be meters per second, plus the acceleration, which is what we're looking for, times the time. And so you should seconds, be able to work it from there. So we'll take the 0, we'll subtract the 22, move it to the other side. And so now we've got that negative 22 meters per second is equal to the acceleration times 2.0 seconds. Divide both sides by 2.0 seconds. And we get meters per second divided by seconds is going to give us units of meters per second squared, which is good because that's the units for acceleration. And negative 22 divided by 2 is negative 11. So my acceleration is negative 11 meters per second squared. We're going to take a little bit of time in class next time to talk about exactly what that means. But since the acceleration is negative, that means that the velocity is changing in a negative manner, or it's becoming more negative, or is going from positive to negative or negative to more negative. So in this case, w that makes sense because it's slowing down from 22 meters a second to zero. Okay, keep in mind that a negative acceleration doesn't mean that it's slowing down. It means that it's the velocity is going in the negative direction, um, is moving and changing in the neg in a negative way. Um, so let's look at part B. The B is how far does it travel before stopping? So I still have the same information, but now it's asking what is the change in my position, the change in displacement. So again, I'm going to look at my equations and I'm going to find the one that uses the information that I have, which is going to be this one, that the change in displacement is equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity over 2 times the time. I could have used any other equation. The other ones also will work now that I have the acceleration. I could have used 
pretty much any of them that are there now that I have that information. But this one seemed to be the easiest one. So we'll say that the change in the distance is equal to, or the displacement is equal to the initial velocity, which was 22, plus the final velocity. So again, meters per second divided by 2, and then times the time, which was 2.0 seconds. So 22 plus 0 is 22 divided by 2 is 11. So 11 meters per second times 2 seconds, which will give us an answer of 22 meters. So that will be the displacement. Displacement is 22 meters. There you go. So that's one example. I'm going to go ahead and do one more. Let's go down to the next slide. So this is the last one that I'm going to do right now. And so this one tells us that we have an object that starts from rest, form rest, oops, starts from rest, which means that my initial velocity is 0 meters per second, right? It moves with a constant acceleration for a distance of 150 meters. So that means that the change in the distance, change in position, is 150 meters in 5 seconds. So the time is 5.0 seconds. So what is the acceleration of the object? So now we'll just look at our equations. We're looking for the acceleration. And so we need to find something that has initial velocity, change in displacement, time, and acceleration. Now, I don't know what the final velocity is, so I probably want an equation that doesn't include that one. Okay, now I see, what, looking at my equations, that I have one that looks like this. x equals x naught plus v naught times the time plus 1 half a t squared. Okay, all of the other equations have final velocity in it, which I don't know what that is, so I can't really use those. Now you say, well, well, Mr. Bywater, this one got x and, and x, initial x. How do, well, I don't have those either. Well, you do have the change in the position, right? So if you take the final position and subtract the initial position, so let's just take this equation and go minus x naught, then we have x minus x naught is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And you'll notice that this final position minus initial position is that delta x, okay? Which means that now we can put that in. We can say that's 150 meters is equal to the initial velocity, which was 0, times the time, which is 5 seconds, is e uh, plus 1 half times the acceleration times 5 seconds squared. So you should be able to work it from there. These two multiply to give you 0. So we've got 150 meters is equal to 1 half times the acceleration times 25 seconds squared. Make sure to square the units as well. We will divide by 1 half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So that will give us 300 meters. And then we will, so we're going to divide by the 1 half. So that will give us 300 meters equals A times 25 seconds squared. And then we'll divide both sides by 25 seconds squared. I really mean monkey math. When I say monkey math, I want you to show every single step. And so acceleration is equal to 300 divided by 25, which is going to be 12 meters per second squared. So that's your answer. So I hope those two examples are enough to kind of give you a head start and a heads up for what you're going to be doing in your homework tonight. Good luck.